Hello everyone, so I'm Florent, I'm working for Red Hat and I will present you um, what we did with TIA and the VS Code extension. So, so this is uh, some keyword I will uh, show be for my presentation. <coughs> but first I will do a quick survey. So the first one I think many people are using uh, no TIA. But how many of you have developed custom extension, for example? Uh, have you developed some VS Code extension on top of TIA as well? Okay. Okay. So I will try to match the audience. So I will do a quick of history. So first we were in Eclipse shape. And it was quite hard uh, because our ID was not uh, as we wanted. So we wanted to replace our, our current ID with something which was better. We wanted something that starts shape very quickly so we don't have to wait something. So if we need to wait, for example, that the ID is compiling, when we want to start uh, the work phase, it was quite hard because people don't want to wait. We wanted something very secure, so it means that uh, even if a plugin is totally broken, it should not break the full ID. Let's say you, you want to open a workspace and you have a blank page because the ID is not compiling, the user experience is not so good. And one other aspect was the code isolation. So let's say a plugin is not well written as well, and you still want to be able to load open files, you have some basic stuff. So this is why we wanted to separate the thread of the main UI and the plugin. And one other issue was the dependencies mismatch. Many people are using the same libraries, but with different version. And usually, when all the people are, when you build all the, or you bring all the components together with different version, some may work and some may not work. So we wanted to be sure that even if you have 100 plugins with all the same libraries, but with different version, it should, it should still work. So we looked at what we had. It was a J6 ID based on grit. So every time that we wanted to add something new, we had to recompile the full ID. So it was a long step. It was based on grit. So uh, at some point, grit was great, but nobody, today's nobody <laughs> is liking grit. And it was a low level API. So it means that you were able to <laughs> customize anything in the ID but you could as well break everything. So uh, you have great power, but you can break everything. So we said no to, to that. So we look at the TI extension model. <coughs> we still had to recompile the full ID when we wanted to add a new extension. And we were downloading the extension from NPM GS. So um, if you have some network issue, it may be a problem. And it's a lot of API. As Sven said, uh, with TIA, with the extension model, you can override everything. It's very simple. But as well, you can break everything. So we wanted to avoid that. And the dependency injection stuff is very great. But when you are a beginner, it's ver very hard to know what are the interface that you need to override, uh, which code you need to look at, uh, what you can do. So for beginners, it's pretty hard. If you have more knowledge on TIA, it's better and it's easier because you know, you know all the interface you need to override, what you can do, etc. So we say no as well to the TI extension. Okay. So 
So we wanted to bring something new, like self-contained. All the dependencies are stored inside the plugin. So at runtime, if you provide the plugins or the extension, we don't want to download anything else. All is self-contained. We wanted to load the plugins at runtime, and we wanted to have a simple API. Simple API is more, you have an entry point, and on this entry point, you can have access to all what you can do. So you can enter tr.something, and you can see with code completion everything that you can do. Of course, if you want to bring the dependency in injection in your extension, you can still do that. I it's up to you. Uh, we wanted to have the plugins running locally in the browser side with web worker on the server side. And this is where we said by discussing on GitHub, okay, maybe we can bring as well the VS Code extension support. One advantage with the plugin protocol, it's easier to have backward compliance because even if we change all the class name, uh, we just need to provide the same API, the high level API, and it's still compliant to everyone. So we can replace, move the code from one package to another one. It doesn't matter, your plugin is still compliant. One drawback of this is that you have an high level API. So it means you cannot do everything or you cannot ch change everything. So as someone said, <coughs> if you want to do something in the DOM stuff, you cannot do that. As Thomas said, we have some ways to do that by providing our custom plugin namespace. This is done by an extension, and then the plugins can use these extensions. This is a very quick overview of the plugin model. Thomas will give a deeper uh, overview in a session tomorrow. <coughs> but we have plugins running separately from the main uh, entry point. <coughs> and the plugins can run on the web worker or server side. And it's using the JSON RPC to communicate. So it's very basic overview. It's very easy to start uh, to write plugins or uh, to use VS Code extension. You can use the scaffolder of uh, VS Code. You do like your code, and then you have a VS Code ex extension. Then you can package this extension and load this extension into TIA. And when it's inside TIA, you can develop this extension, run it, and debug it. You just need to add a breakpoint, and you have the hosted mode start or hosted mode debug instance, and you are able to debug your VS Code extension. It's very easy. The hosted mode is just a separate instance of TIA. So you launch TIA, then you connect to this first instance. Then when you develop a plugin, we will launch a separate instance and we will add this plugin only on the new instance. So you have two instances of TIA running for example on different port if you are if you are using the uh, web browser uh, mod. On the first instance you just have TIA and on the other instance your plugin. So if you do change changes on the first instance you can see the new in the new changes on the live update on the second instance. Okay, so let's do a quick demo. So, yeah, it's a TIA instance. It's running inside TIA, but it's still TIA. And I see on the VS Code Marketplace that there is a very nice uh, extension which is a bracket per color to bring colors <laughs> in your code. So, and it's very popular because you have more than three, or like 
four millions of downloads for, for that. So. so let's say we want to bring colors <laughs> to my TI instance. So I copy the link of the install button. I go back to my TI. So here we can see it's white, so not so much color. And what I will do, uh, I will use a deploy by plugin ID uh, command. And here I pass the VS Code extension link. And I click on enter. So I don't know if it's working or not. No. We I don't know if I have the Wi-Fi. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I would do that. So now we have colors there. So it's very easy. You just have to click on the button. So yeah, it's a very simple extension. But <laughs> with the VS Code extension, you can do more like just color. <laughs> so, so, but it was easier to show you something very quick than. But we, we can use uh, every uh, VS Code extension for the language support. For example, in Che, we are using the Java extension, Python, PHP, uh, .NET. OK. So the development status. VS Code keyword is very popular keyword on TID um, GitHub. So if you just filter on the VS Code keyword, you can see that we have <laughs> more than 200 issue open with this keyboard. We close more than <laughs> 300. And a lot of pull requests have been merged as well for VS Code or VS Code Monaco, VS Code support. So this is one way to track the VS Code extension uh, work. It's to track the TI tracker. And it's for the compliance. So you can go on the website here. I don't know if you see something, but if I zoom in. You have some columns, you can see if it's implementing the TIA master or different version of TIA. I don't have the Bexpeak version uh, of TIA, which happened last night. But And here you can compare with all the VS Code extension. So if it's red, it means that uh, you will never get that working inside of TIA. If it's green, it doesn't mean it will work as you may expect, but we provide the API compliance. So maybe sometime now uh, it's less true, but at some point we were adding some mocks. So the API was there, but it was saying uh, not implemented. Yeah, and you ca we can scroll down and we can see that we still cover a lot of uh, API. No, no, uh, it, it's, n it's not supported at this point of time, but uh, for example, here we can see that it was not supported in a given version of TIA, but now it is supported in the latest version of TIA. So you can track here if it was not supported and now it is supported. And yes, the goal is to have everything green. So you can have uh, all your VS Code extension running on top of TIA. Another tool made by Anton is a VS Code, code, code
coverage. I don't know how to say the, the name of this extension, but you install this uh, tool inside your VS Code extension, uh, source tree. Then you will run the command after install it. And if you run this command, it will tell if all the APIs that you are using from VS Code are there or not in tier. So it's very easy to check if your VS Code extension will mostly work or not on tier. And Microsoft have some API tests as well in their registry, in their GitHub repository, sorry. And we are able to run this API test now. Uh, I don't have the final status, but at the beginning, we were failing on all the tests, <laughs> and now we have <laughs> a lot of green tests, and every developer providing uh, VS Code extension support now are running this test, so we have better and better support. So for example, if you do some web views, uh, we have a better support. Now we'll speak more on TI and what you can do with containers. So this is what we do with Eclipse Che. So sometimes you have your extension, which is written in TypeScript. So in that way, it's very easy because you just need the Node.js runtime. But sometimes you have some code that needs some external tools. Let's say you are developing a Java LSP uh, extension, then probably you will use Java in your extension. And that's a problem because if you don't have Java, then you will not be able to start anything with Java. So with Tia, we are able to do like in VS Code uh, development server. We have the Tia endpoint in different containers. And this container, are able to communicate with the main T instance. So it means that we can, inside a Java container, hide the T endpoint and run the VS Code extension in that container. So if we have one plugin with this version of Java, we are able to run just in this container. And if we have another plugin which is not compliant with Java 11, we are able to start a new container and install the VS Code extension just in that container. And all the Node.js plugins can run in the default tier container. So I will just show you here, it's very easy. We have tons of plugins in Eclipse Che. And we can see that if we connect to Chia, we don't have Java command because we are inside the Tia ID container, so it's pure Node.js runtime. But here we can see that we have the Java debug or Java support, and for this one, we are running plugins inside a new container, and in this container we have Java. And I can show you. Uh, yeah. It's very hard to see, but yeah, we can see that we have a node process with a endpoint TI process. So it's not directly available with TI because uh, TI run uh, is not aware of containers. But if TI is aware of all the containers, then we are about to do this kind of stuff as well. Uh, so in the work that we want to do or need to do, uh, for now, in the full, only in the full Docker image of TI, you have the support of the VS Code uh, extension. So maybe we need to provide another Docker image with uh, VS Code support. No, no built-in extension, 
Like for example, you have extension, you have Docker image for Java, for Python. Maybe we need just to provide a simple Docker image with the VS Code shipper. As, as uh, Sven said, we want to improve the VS Code API compliance to have the, the, a green page. Of course, we are using the feedback of users. So when people are opening or creating issue um, on GitHub, for example, I have tested this extension. This extension is not working on TIA. Then we will test or implement this API before some other API. Uh, this part may be difficult because it's not open source. So, but yeah, maybe we need to, to look at it. We want to reduce the size of the TI endpoints. So the, the process that is hosting all the plugins we want to reduce the size of this, so to cut a lot of dependencies to have this bootstrap smaller. And we have some discussion of the API namespaces, because for example, right now we have a TI namespace, which is the same as VS Code namespace. So maybe we want to just use VS Code for VS Code and just TI for the stuff that you cannot do with VS Code namespace. So I think during these two days, we will discuss a lot of that. And thank you. <laughs> I don't know if you have some question, but I th we will be there for the whole day. So. Yes. You are waiting for the next one. So yeah, just um, after Sven's presentation and yours, um, so the marketplace for Microsoft is not open source, um, but you still manage to install stuff when you get when you have the ID basically of the the plugin. So uh, I'm not sure I understand exactly how the marketplace is working. You cannot provide an additional UI to list all the extensions available, but you can still download the extension from the marketplace that they provide. Is that correct? Yeah. So. Uh, with TIA, we are able to search for the keyword VS Code extension, and with that, we are going to the VS Code marketplace, download the binary, and install the binary on top of TIA. But for example, with CHE, we already have a local registry, and in this registry, you can search all the uh, TIA uh, plugins that you can install on your TIA instance. So you have, there is the official VS Code Marketplace registry. And in CHE, we have the Eclipse CHE plugin registry where you can search or install uh, some extension. F for now, this registry is just a dummy uh, Apache server. What is preventing CIA or CHE to provide a listing of all the Marketplace entries uh, from Marketplace? Thing. Nothing. The license does, yeah. okay. Just the license. But there are APIs that we could co copy paste. And the problem is they have a license. W once you download VS Code as a user, you get the right to access the marketplace and download extensions. So, like, we cannot build a tool that does that but the user has to do that. And before that, the user has to download VS Code to be legally compliant there. And we have heard of companies getting nice letters from Microsoft about this. So that isn't, it seems to be an issue, yeah. So what we do mostly in Eclipse Shea, we are downloading the extension from GitHub release pages instead of the marketplace as well. But the, the, sorry, one question. The, you mentioned there there is a Che extension marketplace, but yeah, that, 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 it's that. just a plugin registry, yeah. Okay, but, but that is including all the sidecar metadata that you have for Che, right? It's not a pure 
pure VS Code extension uh, thing? Uh, there are um, some meta extra metadata, but mm. you can provide any extensions that you want. All right. There is just an extra metadata if you need to specify the Docker image to use as a container, but if it's not there, it's okay. Is there still place for uh, TR plugins? So, this is one other <laughs> in the list of topics. Uh, currently, we have the TR plugins and the VS Code extension support. A lot of people <laughs> are discussing if we really need TR uh, plugins or just use VS Code extension. Uh, what I will say is that for now, uh, for now, we want to have the namespace support, so you wa we want to provide TIA namespace, VS Code namespace, and Eclipse J namespace. The TIA plugin is just a packaging, so, okay. Let's say, when we say TIA plugin and VS Code extension, in fact, we have two parts. There is a binary, like the VSEX package or the TIA package, it's just a zip file. Uh, so we can drop one of them. And then we have the namespace support. So we import in your code, in you do import VS Code or import TR plugin. So in that case, I still think you need the TR namespace. Uh, for example, if you want to know the, um, the user language from, uh, from an extension, uh, this is not possible with the VS Code API because we, you will know the uh, language of the server, not from the user. So you still need some namespace specific to TI, I think. But maybe for the binary package, we can drop it. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe you have your... You technically, you could uh, wrap your uh, extension as VS Code. VSAX and uh, use this uh, namespace, yes, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, the, VS, uh, the namespace are separated of the binary uh, extension file. Mm -hmm. So we can do what we want for now, but maybe in the future we need to simplif simplify this thing. And I think I'm over time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>